Well, we're still on 141 consecutive games. And it's all because of one little console who... who WILL IT BE STOPPED?! Labyrinth. Wait, this controller doesn't have a CRE button. This is the same as that Santa game earlier, navigating a dark maze without running into bugs before time runs out. This time, however, you play as a mouse. I I'm assuming that's what that is. And the power-ups are blocks of cheese. This feels more generous with time than the other game, but is no less grating to play. Fortunately, the 10 levels took me under 10 minutes to finish, at which point the end screen pops up. I think it's supposed to show the mouse dancing, but it looks like the sprites glitched out and there's just an ear celebrating. Lawn Purge, wait a minute. I've seen this game on a different cheap-ass bootleg console. Mow all the grass before running out of fuel. Hitting things like rocks or weeds causes you to slow down and use more fuel than normal. I say normal, but I really don't know what normal is. You move faster and use less fuel when going in long straight lines. Except when the guy slows down for no apparent reason. This wouldn't be as terrible if the controls... you know... worked. It's a coin flip whether the game will let you change directions when you want, or arbitrarily put a half second delay on it. Given the already small margin for error thanks to the low fuel count, messing up once can often mean running out of gas. At which point the game boots you back to the title screen. Oh, and sometimes clouds will pass by and cause already cut grass to grow back. It's like nature's dick kick in shrieking 8-bit form. Lucky time. Guide the pig to eat things that get thrown at him by another pig. Earn X number of points to reach the next level. This goes really fast when you realize the pears count for the most points and the cherry doubles your movement speed. There's not much in the way of challenge since nothing moves particularly fast and there's no time limit. There are barely any items that damage you, and the flashing money bag hearts don't increase your health because there isn't any. Yet another game that's over in under 10 minutes. M Day. Space invaders, but you're underwater as a diver or. crab or. blue haired child of some sort? Unlike Space Invaders, enemies move faster not as their ranks thin out, but as the stage count goes up. Said stage is displayed in the lower right. Yeah, that's not the life counter. Your life counter is the conga line of hearts that pops up when you die. It's five stages long, and I got through all of them in under three minutes. This whole game is shorter than the average Stone Temple Pilots song. I'll be completely honest, I just wanted to make a Stone Temple Pilots reference and didn't know where else to put it. Look, I need to remember the good times before I said, hey, why don't I make a Lexa book video? Magic Doors. Ever wanted a more convoluted and frustrating version of Hotel Mario? Well, here it is. Guide this homeless clown around, collecting items until the game stops you and moves you forward one level. You go through marked doors that lead to other doors with the same mark above them. Said marks include the male and female symbols, boat anchors, hearts... Flowers? Some of these symbols get really garbled, and it's hard to tell what some of them are. I died a few times because what looked like two different symbols actually led to each other. Making matters worse is how slow the clown moves. Items despawn after a while, so if it appears more than 10 feet away, odds are he's not going to make it before it respawns somewhere else. That's also assuming the items spawn somewhere you can pick it up as sometimes they'll appear within walls or rock piles. They also tend to blend in with some of the backgrounds, so good luck finding them if you're colorblind like me. Memory Test 16 cards, 30 seconds, and you're done. That's it. Oh, and the game freezes when you win. Monster War Take control of a bagel and shoot monsters. Slowly. By monsters, I mean scorpions, octopi, fish, and turtles with missile shots which you can't block. I don't know if it's that the maps are way too big, or the bagel moves way too slow, but oh wait, I, I do know, it's both. 
Even if you get some power-ups like the stronger shot or the speed boost, the game still moves at a snail's pace. Also, the enemies, which you have to destroy all of, will respawn several times, dragging out each level even more. Overspeed Racing I swear that logo looks familiar, but I can't pin it down because so many racing games have fire in their logos. Drive in a straight line until your fuel runs out. You can get fuel by running into fuel trucks, oh, oh dear god, it's just a demake version of that other racing game I played earlier. But here, touching absolutely anything causes you to crash. Even puddles of water make you lose control and explode. I'll say this one's better because of the mysterious green line that never goes away, like nature is trying to take over the street, and the speedometer. There's no fucking way this car is going 400 kilometers per hour, which for reference is faster than a Formula One car. Or maybe Doc Brown and Marty McFly have been doing it wrong this entire time. Panda. Get all the bamboo shoots, open the exit door, and leave the stage. Easier said than done because the panda constantly gets caught on walls. Also, traps pop up, usually without warning, and damage you. Flaming tiles also damage you, and seem to randomly go away since they can stay active for absurd amounts of time. Some will even deal damage from one or two tiles away. This is certainly harder than the previous games, but it's harder for all the wrong reasons. Penguin. That's the face of a protagonist that has already suffered a lot and knows it's about to suffer even more. Jump up each moving platform until the level ends. A simple concept, executed poorly. You can't move at all. Not while on the platform, not while in the air. If you jump and miss a platform, you die. If you jump, miss a platform, and try to land on the original platform again, you phase through it and die. If you try jumping on a diagonal platform when it's moving down instead of up, you phase through it and die. If the game starts you in a situation where it's not possible to jump up to the next platform, Pinball. I'd much rather play pinball on the Atari 2600 than this. It's the stiffest, most unnatural feeling pinball video game I've ever played. You would think that in a pinball game, you'd make sure the paddles respond faster than half a second after pushing a button. Assuming they respond at all. You might be surprised to know that, despite what it looks like on this screen, there's a second screen above this one which I only ever saw for a few seconds. Otherwise, I just watched the world's sharpest pinball roll past paddles that I had little to no control over. Play cards. It's solitaire. That's it. Well, it's solitaire with a very slow cursor, and you can't tell how many cards are in each stack. It even tries to do the Windows Solitaire ending, but it was animated by someone who just learned what a motion tween is. Plum- oh no! It's Mario Brothers, but slower. I'm realizing now that a lot of these games can be described as, insert game here, but slower. Aside from the speed, jumping feels really stiff, and I often just fell through the sides of platforms. Kicking enemies into the water can cause their spawn points to flash, but none of it matters because this game will abruptly end after a couple minutes. You got all the enemies? Good for you! There is no level 2. Plush Dog. It's whack-a-mole, but with... puppies? Fuck you, I'm not doing this. In fact, you don't have to. I dropped the controller and walked away, but kept advancing through level after level despite scoring zero points every time. Even if you actually wanted to whack the puppies, the controls are terrible. You can't hit two directions at once, and moving to the side while in a corner skips the cursor to the other side of the row. It's unpleasant to play on multiple levels. Pulver. It's Monster War, but with bugs. That's it. Puzzle. It's a slider puzzle with numbers. Fuck. Off. At least this game looks like it could run on Windows 3.1. Also, sometimes it doesn't spawn the numbers correctly. I wound up with no 8 tile, but did have a double zero tile. Radish Field. 
It's assart. Again. This time it would force me to use pickaxes, even if I'd already cleared all the regular spaces. Other times I still had tiles to clear and no way to get to them, but I got sent to the next stage anyway. Done in under seven minutes, no ending, moving on. Road Hero. I couldn't tell if I was moving sometimes because, well, the road doesn't move. You can collect stars which... do nothing? Or you can collect whatever the hell this is to turn into a rocket car, which doesn't move any faster. Then get another to turn into a plane and fly over the course, meaning you don't have to pay attention to anything for a solid 20 seconds. Without that power-up, steering is sluggish and there's not much time to react to anything. The worst part of this game is that both cars need to finish before the next stage can happen. Of the roughly 9 minutes I spent playing this game, 4 of them were spent waiting for the CPU to finish. A CPU which I saw start a race by driving 10 feet straight into a barrel and crashing. At least the ending subverted my expectations. I was just expecting the end or nothing at all, but instead I got... <laughs> Robot. It's the same as those moving turret slash defense games from earlier, but there's a robot. It even has the same enemy planes and UFOs as before. At least with this one, you can't get away with sitting in a corner and spamming the fire button. But you can still alternate between two spots near the middle and be fairly safe. Rocket Man. Not the Elton John song. There seems to be something resembling effort put into this one. Each stage has three tiers, and you move between them to shoot whatever enemies pop up. The problem is the massive delay on everything. Shooting, initiating the rocket jump, landing... I need to see at least a full second into the future to take damage slightly less often. The exception to that is the Dragon Boss, which fires heat-seeking projectiles that are almost unavoidable. And to think, this was almost something resembling playable. Russia. This is probably going exactly where you think it is. Yep, it's Tetris, but with a bunch of deformed pieces. They managed to screw this game up by not having a straight line piece, so you can't even Tetris in Tetris, or in this case, Russia in Russia. Seaman. It is a terrible battle for survival, but it's a necessary part of the development. Nature can be cruel. Yeah, I have no idea how to play this. You get bubbles to fill the air meter, but you can swim to the bottom and... do... nothing? No items to get, the aquatic life doesn't seem to do anything, my final rating is a huh? out of 10. Shoot. It's the clay pigeon game from Duck Hunt. Sort of. Hit the D-pad to shoot left, hit the face buttons to shoot right. It's actually functional. This is one of, what, three, four games I can say isn't so bad on this console? And it only took 164 games before finally reaching that milestone. Shooting Balloons. I almost called this Low Rent Buster Brothers, but that doesn't seem quite right. You shoot balloons before they fly off screen and... Uh, actually, that's it. You can freeze time or get a speed boost with power-ups, but there's just one never-ending stage and the gameplay gets old way too fast. Shot Put This is basically the same as Discus. Mash buttons, hit forward, hold up, go the distance. Eh. Silent Hunter This is like a strange game adaptation of The Hunt for Red October. I mean, aside from the ones that already exist. You pilot a ship toward enemy vessels and torpedo them into dust. Navigation is tough, but hitting anything is much harder. Sometimes hitboxes are just suggestions more than anything else. Also, some targets are too low for torpedoes, and I don't know how to fire down at them. Can I use depth charges? Do I even have depth charges? Sniper. This is just like that one game earlier where I won by not moving and holding fire. Guess what I did here? I didn't move, I held fire, and I beat the game in five minutes. Star. 
Replace the Tron light cycles with the snakes from Snake. When you're knocked out, your star trail disappears. That's about all I know for sure in this game. I don't know how scoring works, and I have no idea when I'm doing well or not. I've lost as the first snake eliminated, and I've lost as the last snake standing. I... I, I just don't know. Star Attack If Sinistar and Asteroids had a baby and then immediately abandoned it, this is what it would look like. I have no idea how to progress because it's nothing but the same ships going by no matter how many I destroy. Oh, but hitting them is a whole other ordeal. You move and aim the turret with the same controls. The turret fires in eight directions, but only faces four directions. So most of the time it's hard to tell where you're aiming. Strong. It's a block pushing game. Another block pushing game. Like earlier, you can skip levels by pressing the A button. It's just... It gets more and more underwhelming as the games go on, but... I can see the light at the end of the goddamn tunnel for these. Just... Just hang in there.